HTML tags, um, and you can apply markup to, H um, to plain text using these tags. Um, so these tags are interpreted by the browser, but you can't, they're not printed on the web page. So for example, when we have the, the bracket P's, like when you visit the website, you're not going to see that. It'll come rendered as like different paragraphs. Um, you use this greater than or less than and greater than sign to differentiate tags from the rest of the document. For example, um, here's a, a beginning span um, HTML tag. So you, have, you need the open brace, and you need the element type, and then you have a closing brace right after. And using these tags, you can enclose any text to um, tell the browser like what kind of element it is. Um, so you, for, um, to enclose an element, you need both an opening tag and a closing tag. So we have the opening span tag, and we also have the closing span tag. And you'll notice that they look a little different. Um, the closing tag has this backslash in it. Oh, questions? Yes? Um, well, two questions. Do we have to have no space between the close tag and the hello world? Oh, no, you can have space. Okay. And um, another question is, how does the browser differentiate from the brackets versus like what you actually want to write your tag, your actual text? Okay. So I think most um, like HTML editors will be able to, or like most browsers will be able to tell, but there are also special um, HTML. And inspirational CSS. It's laid out by an organization called WC3. So there's a whole like you know, a couple hundred pages of specifications for these languages, and how it should be displayed and rendered by the browsers. Um, Firefox does a great job of following those specifications, so does Safari. Uh, to a lesser extent, Google does follow those specifications as well. They're pretty good at it. Internet Explorer has been off in their own world for the longest time. Um, only now, Internet Explorer 8, are they starting to, uh, I, guess, I guess, follow those standards, and even then, they still have some issues with it. Um, so like CSS, so this is all CSS2 stuff too. Um, CSS3 is kind of the, the next version of CSS which is coming out. And things like Firefox and Chrome and Safari are already starting to support that. And Internet Explorer is still catching up with CSS2. So um, that's just what we mean. Uh, one important thing about that though is Internet Explorer is the, I think it has the most market share. It's what, it's what most people use, right, Internet Explorer. So whenever you're designing a website, there's no way you can really get around making it stand uh, compliant with Internet Explorer, I mean. But it's just kind of a pain because, you know, it doesn't behave how it should. So you, a lot of times what will happen is, like, you'll, you'll make a website and then you have to, you know, go through it again and make sure it works in Internet Explorer. So that's why, I like, web development people are kind of not so happy with Internet Explorer as well. Okay, so as you saw, I just made that announcement thing say, hello. Um, and you can kind of mess around. If you have uh, Firefox, you can download Firebug. Um, I think we'll use that for like debugging our websites later on in the course. Um, Chrome and Safari, like I said before, already have a developer men menu. So if you want, you can go into some sites and kind of like look at the HTML and mess around with it to see what kind of works. Um, and it won't be permanent, so you can do whatever you want. <laughs> oh, I'll ask later. Oh, sorry. No, no, I didn't get a This can't get a <laughs> okay, I think that's fine. Did you guys all see that, by the way? That, that she changed the HTML? Yeah, I just went down and edited. It's really hard because your things are, your JavaScript is changing it, so you're scrolling back to the top. So I can't, I can't edit it again. So it keeps scrolling. Yeah. This is JavaScript. It's cool, like, dynamically, like, um, changes, like, the HTML to so You get these nice, like, animations of things, like, moving around or things being animated. Um, so what, what we're doing right now, you know, the HTML and the URL thing was a little bit specific. We're just trying to pre-teach a little bit, so we are going to go more in depth with the HTML thing. So don't worry if you didn't catch all of it uh, right away. Uh, so just to recap what we talked about, um, the purpose of browsers are basically to request files from remote servers. Servers basically host those uh, files and respond to your requests. And the internet is the bridge between, you know, your machine at home and the giant machine sitting in Google. Uh, the format of URLs also specifies, um, sorry, tells your browser where to get the file that you're interested in. It specifies which server to contact and which specific file and where that file is located on the server. We'll talk about that more later as well. Um, and what Amber was just talking about, HTML and CSS are just files. So in, in the previous example I showed, um, you know, what happens when your browser requests an image from, from Google server, some, some web server. Um, the way the websites work is instead of requesting an image file, you request an HTML file. 
Um, and those HTML files get sent back to you through the server, and they're basically just text files. And that'll become apparent when we start actually messing with uh, HTML, seeing uh, why it is that they really are just, just text files, um, and nothing, nothing special to them. So just to illustrate a little bit more, we'll, we'll see what happens when we actually visit you know, a full-on uh, full website. So what happens when you actually visit uh, a full website is your browser doesn't just engage in one transaction with the web server. Typically, it downloads and requests a number of files. Um, and it actually all starts with the HTML file. So I was using Firefox, and I visited basically my website, and I saw all the different things that um, my browser downloaded from my website. So you know, we'll show you how to use Firebug later, and you'll be able to use some of this. But the first file is actually the HTML file. And inside the HTML file, um, are instructions for your browser to download CSS files, images, anything else that's required um, to display that one web page correctly, they'll tell your browser to go and get. And then your browser just dutifully goes and follows the instructions and gets the content, and then compiles it and renders it nicely in your, on your computer so you can you know, do a preview of the Are there any questions to that? You guys kind of see how the browser and the web server um, interact how you know you can't really have one without the other to have what uh, So here's just some questions that we threw together. Um, we'll, we'll we'll go through it really quickly. If you guys get bored, we'll, we'll move on. But um, so the first question is, how many additional files are loaded when you visit a URL like this? Um, notice that the URL is an image URL. Does anyone have a a guess to the answer to that. Candy for answering. We'll double, give you two. Double yeah. candy. <laughs> I know. Uh, nice. Go, go ahead. I said just one image. Yeah. Yes. Good job. So do you guys understand that? So this is just one image uh, that gets loaded. Because it's not loading an HTML file. And so you know, the file that it gets back that's read by your browser is just an image file. And there are no instructions in that image file to download more files. So these really are kind of challenge questions that you, you have to think about a little bit. It's, it's quite subtle. Um, okay. Do you guys have any, uh, so the, the second question is, what would you have to do to make a file that's originally located at this URL be accessible at this URL? I don't know if we, oops, sorry. I don't know if we, if we talked about that enough for you guys yet. Does anyone have Yeah, so um, what John explained briefly and what we'll go over um, when you, you guys all have your FTP accounts is that the URL relates exactly, um, in most cases, to the structure of the files on the actual computer. So if you guys have you know, used your computers um, and I guess like try to upload a attachment or something, you'll see something that kind of looks like a URL pop up um, on your screen. It's basically your local path and it's you know, it's like folder, slash folder, slash folder, and then finally file. And that's basically like a, um, a sentence that represents where that file is located. It's like a, it's just, it's just a location for where your file is in, in terms of, you know, text. The URL is just basically the same thing, except that um, in the context of the URL, these, um, these paths and these files, these folders, are the paths and files on the domain, so on the web server, not your local machine. Um, and the last question is a little bit of a trick question. What types of website files aren't stored on the server but rather on a client's computer? And there is actually a correct answer to this, but I'm going to guess cookies. Yeah, cookies. So throwing aside cookies, what I wanted to get, uh, what I wanted you guys to get from this last question is that um, there are almost no files that are accessible via the internet if they're not on a server, right? So to have a file accessible on the internet, it has to be on some server somewhere um, to, to be viewable. And so almost all website files, or basically all website files, um, are located on the server. So later on, if you're doing your project and you create like a nice HTML file, nice images, and for some reason you can't access it. Cookies are basically the exception. We'll, we won't talk about that right now. Uh, maybe we'll get into it a little bit later, but it's just, it's, very, very briefly, it's data that your browser sends um, to the server to identify itself for some kind of state. Okay. So now we're going to um, do software setup. Um, if you guys don't have your computers, you guys can go, but make sure, I think before
before that, we're going to collect your um, names and your student ID so we can give you key card access. Um, and then we can verify that you're here so we don't drop you from the class. And I think there are a couple people who left. Um,